my husband wants a divorce. How do I tell him I'm pregnant without being manipulative? You just say, hey, I'm pregnant, by the way. Let's sign those papers. So recently, my 32 female, husband 53 male, Jordan, told me he wants a divorce. As a bit of background, my husband was a family friend. And after a bit of messing around, I ended up pregnant with our daughter, 14 female. 14? That means you were 18 and he was 29? No, 39? Ew! 18, 39? Yes, I'm saying you. I don't think age gaps are bad later on in life, but 18 and 39 is predatorial, basically. And you were 18 when your daughter was born. You may have been 17 when you were pregnant because you're pregnant for like 10 months. Why am I marrying so many of these old men prying on these young, innocent girls? We ended up having a good old shotgun wedding, courtesy of my highly religious family. The topic of families came up afterwards, naturally, and we both made our stances clear. Jordan wants a big family and always has. I'm talking mother, father, seven children, and a dog type deal. Meanwhile, I wasn't super opposed to the idea of one, although I felt seven was a bit much. Anyway, life goes on as we settle into newly married life. He gets a promotion and is working longer hours. We decide I quit my job to start caring for our daughter full time. So we can save more money from our daycare costs. And when she turns five and starts kindergarten, we decided to start trying for another child. Well, roughly two years into this, with no results, I get cancer. We put the family thing on hold and I opt for treatment. My doctor did warn me that the chemo drugs I was on had a high risk of causing permanent changes to my fertility, but we decided to go through with it anyway. Please don't tell me this man is leaving you because you couldn't have more kids. And you had cancer. There was a rather scary period of time where it looked like treatment was making it worse, but I managed to pull through. Shortly after, me and Jordan get back to family planning. Unfortunately, in this time, it very much seemed like the infertility risk hit as I couldn't keep a pregnancy. The few times I did get pregnant usually ended with a miscarriage, with the one time I made it to full term ending in a stillbirth. Well, after a few months of this, he tells me that he's sick and tired of getting his hopes up only to be let down and that if I get pregnant, I should just not tell him until I was three or four months along, since the risk of miscarriage would go down significantly then. I agree and follow this rule. Pause. That is the most shittiest behavior I've ever seen in my life. Imagine telling your wife like, hey, I'm so tired of you not being able to hold a pregnancy. I'm distraught. I'm emotional. So you can go through those miscarriages alone. So let me know when you can actually carry one and then we could talk. As of last month, I noticed that Jordan became dis to hide it and trap him into paying more money for a child he wouldn't be aware of. Can anyone help me out on the best way to tell him without it coming off this way? You need to focus all of your energy into your pregnancy, okay? You 1000% let that man find out in court from your lawyer to the judge. Cut off the communication with him. That's his problem. He had no problem giving you divorce papers while he was at work. Make him feel stupid. When he goes in the court and he sees like, Oh my gosh, she's pregnant. She can have a baby. No. Am I in the wrong for saying you should have thought about that before you procreated? My ex and I have a 13 year old daughter, Nicole. Nicole has several medical conditions that require a lot of attention. She'll need some sort of in-home assistance for the rest of her life. While we have an aide to help a couple of days a week, it's still a challenge. The outcome of Nicole's condition became clear when she was two. At that point, my ex and I had agreed that we wouldn't have more kids because it wouldn't be fair to anyone. There'd be no way that we could focus attention on two kids. Someone would lose out in this situation. We divorced when Nicole was five. We originally had 50-50 custody. Three years later, my ex remarried. His new wife, Callie, is nice. My ex did say that she didn't understand the severity of Nicole's condition. I figured there was a learning curve. Eventually, Callie basically said that she wanted to be hands-off, which I respected, though I wondered how it worked considering Nicole lives with them half of the time. Last year, my ex and Callie had a baby. I was a little surprised given my ex was always firm on not having more kids, but figured it wasn't any of my business. He did begin to complain that it was a lot of work juggling Nicole and the baby. I sympathized but really didn't know what else to say. Recently, the venting got worse. He said that Callie yelled at him for taking Nicole to her physical therapy appointment instead of helping her with the baby. He brought up potentially having Nicole stay with me more. I wasn't entirely shocked, but it pissed me off. I said Nicole was his daughter. He can't just abandon the responsibility. He asked what he was supposed to do about the baby. I said, maybe you should have thought of that before you procreated? I mean, really, we discussed this 10 years ago as why it'd be hard to juggle two kids. Why did you think having another one would be a good idea? He got quiet and said that Callie wanted a baby. I said that isn't enough of a reason and maybe he should have thought harder before bringing more life into this world. The conversation ended with me saying that I'd call my lawyer and we could arrange for him to have less custody as I'd rather have my daughter be properly cared for than to be viewed as a burden. Callie called me that night very upset that I had made my ex cry and that I said her baby shouldn't exist. That's not what I said completely, more that they didn't think it through. She called me a jerk. So, am I in the wrong? Hi. I just have a confession. I need to get off my chest. I am not in love with my husband anymore. He is the father of my child 
and the provider of all of our finances. But I really can't stand him. I'm staying in this marriage because I have no other option. I have no connection to him emotionally. I resent him. I gave up my career to be with him. I wasted my youth on him. And I left a very privileged life to be with him. Don't get me wrong, I'm still privileged financially, but I hate that I'm married to someone that I don't love anymore. Try couples counseling. Maybe you guys can reconnect. Maybe the resentment of you having to give up your career to be with him is causing all of this hate and hatred towards him. I say, if he isn't bad to you, work on it. Get a counselor. Sit down and talk. Communicate. Try to figure out a way for you to actually love him if he's not mistreating you. I'm sorry. That wasn't... Not what anybody wants to read, ever. Am I the asshole for refusing to let my sister apologize to my fiance so she can be in our wedding? I, 27 male, have five siblings, and one of my sisters, Ava, 26 female, has been awful to my fiance, Reese, 27 female, ever since they met. The biggest thing is transphobia, and Reese isn't even trans, but Ava made up her mind when they met that she was. She's made some really awful comments about Reese being a dude about Reese needing more hormones to make her sound more feminine because she does an awful job of it and just other awful comments like that. Ava makes most of these comments made on the fact that my fiance has a traditionally male name, even if the spelling is more popular for girls and her voice isn't as gentle and soft as Ava thinks it should be. We ended up cutting Ava out because of this. I told her to stop, I set boundaries and Ava refused to respect them. Now we're engaged, the issue has come up because all of my siblings are in the wedding and Ava's upset that she's being left out. My parents told her to try and apologize, so she reached out to ask if we would let her be in the wedding if she apologizes. No ma'am, no ma'am. Because the only reason you're apologizing is because you want something, not because you actually regret being, you know, being the nasty person that you were being or treating my fiance like shit. You're not doing it because you truly regret your actions. You're only doing it simply because you don't want to be left out of something. No. She said that she wanted to go back to normal. I told her that I wouldn't believe her apology after all this time, and I would see it as her having FOMO, fear of missing out. She told me that it's not fair and it's been over two years. I told her she had two years to try and make amends, period. That just goes to prove that you're only doing it because you don't want to be left out. It's been two years, and if you really felt that bad, you would have 100% spoke up about it before now. My parents think I'm being too hard on Ava, and I should let her apologize and find a way to move on. They said that Reese can surely say what kind of apology she would need to be able to move on from this. Reese told me she's glad that I took the stand, because she doesn't want to be the bad guy within the family. But also, she's not over the way Ava spoke to her and the things that Ava would say about her. Reese's brother is trans, so we're also aware that if Ava would speak that way to her when Reese isn't trans, that she would absolutely say things to my future brother-in-law. Ava is pissed that I won't give her a chance, and my parents are siding with her more than I would like. They say that I should be willing to move on. Am I the asshole? Absolutely not. You are not the asshole. Your sister is only doing this because she doesn't want to be left out. Your sister is going to be embarrassed when people ask why she wasn't a part of the wedding and you guys are truthful. She doesn't want that to happen. Your sister is trying to save face. And I absolutely love the fact that you're not going to bend to your parents' pressure. I love that you're standing, you're standing firm on this. Do not allow her to be a part of your wedding. I wouldn't even allow her to come because your bride-to-be has a brother that is trans. I wouldn't even give my sister an opportunity to look in his direction, to breathe his fucking air because she doesn't she doesn't deserve to. You have been nothing but nasty to my fiance. You do not get to be here and watch us celebrate the happiest day of our lives. You don't deserve that. Why would I want you to celebrate me if all you've done is be nasty to me since you've known me? Hell no. Bro, you are not the asshole at all. Your parents fucking suck though because they know that their grown ass daughter 
is doing this shit simply because she don't want to be fucking left out. It, they fucking suck. They fucking suck too. I'm so sorry, but I'm very proud of you for setting your boundaries and standing firm on them. A person from my work, Jessica, saw how I store my eggs. Like most people I know, on the counter and not in the fridge. She went nuts and told me I should not eat non-refrigerated eggs ever. At work, we often bring in food to share. I brought in a potato and egg salad. A work friend quietly told me that Jessica was telling people in the kitchen to not eat my food since she saw that I do not care about food safety. I explained loudly and front of everyone that the issue was that I do not put eggs in the fridge. Colleagues laughed a little about it since that's how most people do it. They continued to eat my salad. Another person from work, Nicole, came up to me later and told me I should not feed others risky food without informing them. It's the first time I heard about people freaking out about storing eggs. AITA? Oh. What? This is in the The egg podcast. podcast! I genuinely need to know what the fuck is wrong with half of you. I get so many wild DMs being like, Livy, he basically like fucked my best friend. What would you do? What do you mean? What would I do? Like Livy, he texts me maybe once a week. Like, what would you do? You kidding me? Like these things, I'm like, these men are treating you like absolute fucking shit. And you're asking me what I would do. I'd walk the fuck away. I'd find somebody who actually knows my worth. I don't give a single fuck about the love connection that we have or how deeply I care about this person. If they don't value me, my self-worth, my time, my energy get the fuck out of the way it baffles me it's like he cheated but i love him so much news flash news flash when somebody cheats you don't automatically stop fucking loving them but you have to love yourself more like that's what it comes down to it's like i get so many dms like oh my god i'm in this horrible situation he's doing all these horrible things and guess what bitch you're allowing it to happen it's like seeing other five other girls and like never text me like i never hear from him babe you're a pen pal or you're just a fuck to him like at the end of the day like walk away why would you even want to put yourself in that situation? Love ain't enough, bitch. Love is not enough for me to be treated like shit. Constant excuses that you're making for his pathetic actions. Let me tell you something. He doesn't look dumb at all. If anything, he looks like a fucking genius. You look stupid. You're sitting there making excuses for his disgusting behavior. That's on you, bitch. I just need to know, like, when as a society did we start normalizing all these massive red flags and just accepting it? It's like, Livy, what would you do? I would quite literally punch him in the head and walk away. Okay, I wouldn't punch in the head i'd walk the fuck away i'd be like oh wait i know my self-worth and i love myself too much to be treated like shit from an absolute fucking loser i'm gonna walk my ass away stand the fuck up i'm baffled half the time i'm absolutely baffled bitch love isn't enough like have we ever heard of respect have we ever heard of respect i hear these situations that these men are doing and i'm like god knows god knows not to put me with a whack-ass motherfucker because like i just genuinely couldn't handle it i really I really couldn't. Keep me single until there's a respectable person out there who's actually going to treat me with respect. And it's like, the crazy thing is like, what would you do? If you have to ask me what I would do, just know you're in a fuck situation. You never, you never go to someone asking for advice. Like, okay, what would you do if you love this person so much? You guys, I have such a healthy relationship with him. I love him dearly. He treats me like a fucking queen. Well, you're not asking me what I would do because you're like, oh wait, no, I'm just living my best life. This person loves me. You don't need advice on that situation, but you need advice with the whack ass motherfuckers. Like check yourself, honestly. It's getting to a point where like, I can't be nice anymore. Like I'm genuinely, I'm not here to be nice. I'm not here, I'm here to be honest. What are you doing? You look dumb. When did we stop loving ourselves? Or when did we not even start loving ourselves? Like what the absolute fuck is happening? Just know I'm coming from a place of love. Like I really do want the best from all of you. So you need to stand the fuck up and wake up. Cause like this ain't it. Am I the asshole for reporting my friend to CPS? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I, 33 female, have been close friends with Kate, 34 female, for 15 years since our children were babies. She has Joe, 15 male, and I have Sue, 15 female. She has no other children, but I have a total of five kids, all much younger than Sue. When Kate and I first met, we were both working for minimum wage and struggling to raise our babies alone. It was really hard for the both of us. Our children are very close friends, pretty much viewing each other as siblings. Kate and I were roommates for six years, and that ended on good terms when I moved in with my now husband. We talk almost every day, and she kept telling me over the last few months that she was really, really depressed. I have been as supportive as I could, but I'm raising five children and don't always have time to be as present as she needs. Last week, I offered for Joe to come stay with us during fall break so Kate could focus on self-care and so he and Sue could spend time together. Joe showed up absolutely filthy. He smelled like he hadn't showered in months and his clothes had animal pee on them. 
I gently told him he needed to shower and asked him what was going on and he said he forgets to shower and that they haven't had a working washer in a long time and that their cat pees on things. Over the course of the week, he told me that his mom does nothing but smoke and cry. He said she never makes him meals and that he just lives on whatever he eats at school or gets out of the pantry. And that sometimes when there's no food, he steals her credit card when she's asleep and walks to the corner store and gets himself candy for dinner. I talked to Kate and she said she was doing her best and asked me if I can help clean her house. I told her I can't because of my kids. She then asked me for money for a housekeeper or a new washer. I said no. She then asked me if I would take custody of Joe because she's too depressed to care for him. I again told her I have five kids and my husband would not agree to that. I decided to call CPS and told them everything. They told her she has 10 days to clean her home, comply with mental health therapy, buy groceries, and get Joe into counseling or he will be placed in foster care. She said that I should have actually helped her instead of reporting her. So am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for telling my husband I don't care what his preferences are? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I, 22 female, don't shave anything but my face. My husband, 23 male, also shaves nothing but his face. I don't shave mostly because I don't think I should have to. If my husband only has to shave one part of his body, then so do I. But it's also just such a hassle. It takes time in an already long shower. I have very long, very curly hair, and I don't want to do it. I used to shave very early into our relationship, but as we got comfortable in our domestic life, I was able to sit back and take a look at what's important to me. Shaving is just not something important for me to do. The other day, out of nowhere, while we were watching TV, my husband asked me why I don't shave. I really thought this would be a one-day type of thing, so I just said that I didn't think I'd have to. He asked me this before, and I always gave him the same answer. It's not that I never shave. I'll shave occasionally during the summer when I don't want to deal with his friends asking me about it. I also trimmed my bikini line as well, but I was confident around my husband. When it was just the two of us, I felt comfortable going to the beach without shaving. Anyways, our conversation continued. We had a lot of back and forth, mostly consisting of the same thing and different wording, but I think his true intentions came out after a while. He told me he prefers shaven legs and that it's unattractive when women's legs aren't shaved. That totally broke me down. I felt ugly and gross, but also very angry. Out of a very emotional response, I told him that I don't care about his preferences for my body. I also said that I have preferences for his beard or his hair, but I wouldn't be upset if he decided to go against that preference. I told him it's fine to have preferences for my body, but to keep those preferences to himself because I don't want to hear them. He got really angry and yelled at me asking why he can't voice an opinion, but I think that some opinions need to be kept out of view. He apologized at the end, but I feel like such an asshole. He came to me crying because he felt so bad because he hurt my feelings. So am I the asshole? My husband's ex-girlfriend is dying. Her last wish is to be with my husband. As the title goes, my 30 female husband's ex-girlfriend's 33 female was recently diagnosed with late stage breast cancer and her last wish is to be with my husband, 35 male. My husband, let's call him Seb, and his ex, Tanya, became best friends after their breakup a couple of years ago due to her infidelity. They were together for five years. Needless to say, they remained in contact even before he met me. I would be lying if I said it never made me feel uncomfortable even once. It did and it's still does because Tanya is still in love with my husband. She never denied it and in fact would even call or message me when she couldn't get a hold of Seb. Aside from cancer, she also has some mental health issues. Thus, my husband would always tell me to be kind and patient. Seb is no longer in love with her, of course. She cheated and Seb swore that he will never get back to her and that he only sees her as family. Two weeks ago, my husband received a call from Tanya to tell him about the sad news. My husband cried with her and told her everything is going to be okay. They were on the phone the whole day. I forgot to mention that Seb and I moved to Australia a few months ago because of my job and Tanya is in Canada. They mostly talk via long distance calls or WhatsApp. They've been in contact almost every day since which always bothers me but what can I do? After that call, my husband told me everything. To be honest, I felt bad for her and I genuinely feel sad. I asked him what's going to happen now. Seb told me he's going back to Canada, which is a shock. Then he told me that her last wish was to be with him. I didn't see anything except, what about me? He said if I can't leave my job, then he's going to visit me whenever he gets the chance. I walked out without saying anything. Wait, 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 wait. This is your husband and he's leaving you to go spend time with a dying woman wait oh, that doesn't make sense am i wrong for telling my father's affair partner that she married him and she can take care of him my father was not a very warming and caring father when my siblings and i all in our 20s now were young i'm the youngest and was only eight when we all found out that he was having an affair with a woman he worked with the affair only came out because the affair partner grew tired of our father staying married to mom and showed no signs of being willing to divorce her 
So she decided to tell our mom the truth and my mom was completely blindsided. She knew he worked a lot, but he was always an attentive spouse and pretended that he cared about us. Their marriage fell apart and we moved out and started new, but my father fought for shared custody. His affair partner threw herself into the role of stepmom and acted like she was some new person with no history with our family. She even ignored the fact that she destroyed our mom's heart right in front of us. We did not like her and within two years she told our dad she didn't want us around because we made her feel like an unimportant mistake. Am I wrong for telling my father's affair partner she married him so she can take care of him? She was bothered by the fact that none of us would acknowledge her as our father's wife or stepmom. And when asked, we would always say she was our father's affair partner. So anyways, we had no contact with our father for more than a decade and I'm now 22. Recently, the affair partner made contact to inform us that our father suffered several health complications and is now ill and disabled. My oldest brother confirmed this is true and is aware of the hospital he's currently in. None of us had any interest in seeing him and we expressed this, though not to her, our father's side. She decided that my siblings would never give in, but she knew a much younger me had a hope for a better relationship with my dad. So she told me she couldn't care for him and the four young children they have under the age of seven and my family needs me. I told her clearly they're not my family and she married him so she's responsible. Her response was full of anger and I ignored her but she again insulted me and claimed I was sick and cruel. Hi everyone, not sure if ever, anyone remembers as it's been a few months since my last update, but I originally posted earlier this year about my husband Joe accusing me of financial infidelity because I had spent some of our own fun money savings within our agreed upon personal spending limits on a gaming PC and a home office setup, which then devolved in him unfairly accusing me of slacking on my personal appearance, career and housework, and soon it came out that he had been having an affair with a co-worker, Amy, who had become pregnant. We separated right after he moved out and in with her. So that was what happened. Dang. We had one of the best episodes going through her update. So she's saying this is her last update. We'll see if that's true, but this is, she said this is her last update. So she said, last time I updated, we had thankfully quickly agreed on a divorce settlement that allowed me to protect my most important assets. And I had just met with his mistress, Amy, at her request, at which time it was made clear that he had lied to her about numerous circumstances such as that our home belonged to him, it did not, I inherited it from my grandmother, that I was an underemployed high school dropout drug addict, I'm not, I have a master's degree and a high paying tech job, that we've been separated in spirit for years. Also not true, I didn't know anything until he blurted out the news about his affair over the summer, and that he had a vasectomy, he did not. We talked about it, but he had decided not to, despite us, him in particular, not wanting kids. I told her the truth and even provided as much evidence as I had on me, but she didn't seem to believe me and went on home to Joe. I know quite a people have been reaching out for more news, but I wanted to wait until my divorce was finalized to avoid risking any complications. And also, I thought it'd be best to let things settle for a bit. The good news is, I'm now divorced! Woo! The final decree came through a few weeks ago. It actually all went very smoothly. I'm eternally grateful to live in a mutual consent divorce state. That allows divorcing couples to proceed quickly if they can come to an agreement on finances and property. On the Joe Amy front, after my last post, all was quiet for a couple weeks. Until Amy, her due date quickly approaching, reached out again to ask if I'd given more thought to her offer to pay me 17000 <laughs> to vacate the house quickly so that she and Joe could move in. 17000 no. for a house? Yeah. <laughs> Again, this is a house I inherited that I own free and clear, but Joe told her he owns it, and they was just giving me time to get my finances together before evicting me. At this point, I decided to package up a lot more evidence of Joe's lies to send on to Amy. I sent her a copy of the deed and property tax record showing the house is in my name. I sent her copies of my diplomas to prove I am not a high school dropout. I sent her some info on various professional associations I'm involved in and awards I've won to show I actually do have a senior level job and am not underemployed, as well as proof of my income. I sent her copies of all my drug test results for the past five years. Wow. I have a drug free workplace and have to test three, two to three times a year to show I'm not an addict. Receipts. I sent her time stamped photos and text exchanges to show that Joe is still having a romantic relationship with me until July this year. Nothing salacious, just photos of us showing G-rated affection, exchanging loving words over text. I found a text exchange from a couple years ago when we last discussed him potentially getting a vasectomy with his final decision to not proceed with one. 
A couple of days later, she responded. She believed me. Woo! Whoa. However, in the end, it didn't matter. As Joe convinced her that he had lied for very good reasons. Oh, my God. The really? way they both tell the story, they met at work and were incredibly mm. drawn to each other in a way that felt inevitable. However, due to Joe being married, he felt that if Amy knew he was, to that point, happily married, she would either turn away from him and miss out on the love of a lifetime, or she would go ahead with an affair but be consumed with guilt. So to avoid either of these outcomes, and especially to save Amy from guilt, Joe decided to create an alternative narrative in which he was in a marriage that had ended for all intents and purposes years ago in all ways but legally because I was an uneducated addict who kept relapsing and couldn't get my life together. That way she could essentially believe he was single. Mm -mm -mm. Unfortunately, Amy said she understood and forgave him immediately. With a baby due any day, I suppose I can sort of understand the desire to justify the lies, even though the reality is horrifying. I suppose it's also not my problem anymore. Amy did have her baby over a month ago, and I guess she and Joe will make whatever life together, mm. or not, is meant to be. As for me, I'm doing very well. actually got a big promotion at work, not managing people, which I don't want to do, but will be working on higher profile profile projects with a 40% raise Whoa! which starts after the new year. The house is really big for just me so I have a couple roommates now hey. a friend who is going through a divorce moved in as well as a younger cousin who moved to the city for work. We're all having a lot of fun together. I'm not ready to date yet but getting there and looking forward to whatever new adventures this life has to offer. This will probably be my last post as the saga of Joe and Amy, or at least my role in it, is finished with us legally divorced and having no ongoing financial or other ties. The best thing I can do is to leave them to their own story and go on with my Joe-free next phase. Thank you for all listening to my story for much of 2023. I do truly appreciate the support and helpful advice I received along the way. Am I the asshole for naming my baby after my ex's new baby? I am currently 26 years old. I have an ex who is 28 years old. We were together for two years when I was 22 all the way to I was 24. I thought I was going to marry this man. He was honestly my first boyfriend. Serious relationship and I really loved him. We were each other's best friend. So we wanted to have a baby together. We had the names picked out. If we had a baby, we were going to name her Esperanza or Star. He loved both of those names. If we had a boy, we chose that he was going to be named after him. I was never the type to trap anyone. I believe that if it was our time, it was going to be. Both of us agreed that we weren't ready at this time, and we were both okay with it. We ended up breaking up because he wasn't working. He just didn't try hard enough, and I know I didn't want that for myself. I was going to school and working at the same time, so there was no excuse for him as a man. He ended up moving on and got into a relationship. I moved on as well and still haven't had children. Photo part two. Ten years ago, I ended up falling pregnant with my daughter, Katie, during a drunken hookup with a friend. My baby daddy, Mark, began to date his now long-term girlfriend, Jen, four years ago. Jen fell pregnant, and I have been as supportive as I can without crossing any lines. Three days ago, Mark and Jen had their daughter. They named the baby... Katie. <laughs> I asked them if they named the baby after my daughter, trying to understand the logic behind it. But his girlfriend said no. It's just a pretty name and she liked it. I then asked if they planned to use a nickname or a middle name when addressing her on a daily basis and her response was that she didn't see a need for that. I then told Jen that I found this creepy and told Mark he was spineless if he was happy to go along with it. AITA? I would love to be a fly on the wall for the first time it's jen and mark at home with both of them katie yes and they both turn their heads around like oh geez we goof 